Welcome to the second episode of VIT Today's The Next Step. And today we have with us Mr. Pratyush Pandey, who is currently working as an associate consultant at Microsoft. Pratyush completed his BTech in computer science engineering from VIT Valor as a part of the 2020 batch. He has worked extensively on data science, having past internship experience in companies like IBM. We are indeed extremely happy to host you. Hi, Dabonik. Thank you so much. It's a pleasure being here. Looking forward to talking to all of you. Absolutely. When you, for, when you were in your very first year in college, uh, had you already decided upon making a career in some tech, uh, tech giant like Microsoft or did you have any different plans back then? I think a lot of my ambitions in first year in college are almost the same as as they are now. I It was either working at some famous corporation like this or going for higher studies. And I think slowly, depending on how I my experience developed and my like how I progressed forward, it's still between an either or. I mean, I'm already working at Microsoft, but it's still between an either or of whether I'll be doing higher studies later in the future as well. That is one very important question that comes to my mind at this point. That is, what motivated you to, you know, stick to your goal? Like you said, you were very clear from the very beginning. What motivated you to stick to that particular goal? Well, I've, I've always been like extremely passionate about computer science. I actually came into VIT in ECE, but I migrated to computer science in my first year. So a lot of my first year went into working in computer science. And then my first internship at CDAC was something that really drove that passion within me where I worked with a roommate of mine uh, and we worked on like actual technologies working on actual application it was really fun so that was something that i recognized that this is something that i want to do right um often uh, in big universities like say vit for example we hear that you know every person who's pursuing something like cs or it has to know machine learning or you know artificial intelligence or some form of competitive coding and you know like do you think these all actually matter during placements or you know like is it something of kind of a myth that you know you should know all these or like yeah. I think so mach the, the reason I think the reason for this is because machine learning and AI is the next big thing which means that a lot of companies are looking at machine learning and AI hence machine learning and AI can become that X factor which you can present in your CV if you have certain experience there but I don't think that they're absolutely essential, especially in VIT placements. I think what is very necessary and which often people lack is the core fundamental understanding of the basics, things like data, uh, databases, operating systems, uh, data structures and algorithms, how algorithms work and how you can get them to become more efficient and stuff and all. I think a deep understanding of that is more than sufficient for placements, from at least from a base placement perspective. Um, right. So since you are talking about a placement perspective, uh, the first question that you know comes to my mind after hearing that is uh, what might be a good time to actually start working on something like that? Oh, what might be a good time? I think the best time is probably your second year. In your second year, you're settling into a lot of the basics, core fundamentals. I don't think at that time exclusively focusing on academics or like trying to get a grade or being goal oriented is something that's very beneficial rather being process oriented of what you're learning and in my personal experience in VIT uh, in the second and third year that I think there are very crucial subjects which if you develop a certain interest in and do something outside of academics in it would it's extremely beneficial for you right so uh, I'll come to my next question in VIT uh, do you think uh, studying just before the exams you know like the way we do uh, at night somehow wrapping things up or uh, sh or studying should be kind of a continuous process that you need to build upon each and every day in order to maintain a good CGPA. In my personal opinion, I didn't really care about VIT exams that much because as I said, VIT exams, exams are extremely goal oriented. All they, all they help you is in attaining a decent CGPA and that CGPA is your entry barrier to be able to apply to certain corporations and stuff not. I don't think exams per se will develop as much knowledge in you as probably working on a hackathon, uh, like ex extensively working in a hackathon, doing an internship, actually researching stuff yourself will help. So it doesn't matter how you go through the process as far as you're doing the exam well enough. And it, as far as the interest that you have is exhibited in other avenues through which you develop yourself, I think that's more than sufficient. Because I, I, I think a lot of people will call out, collaborate this, that I used to like 
study the day before the exam and just go and give the exam. So I, I had that college uh, engineer in me as well. Um, so again, uh, you, you touched upon a very important aspect to your answer where you talked about, you know, how important uh, CGPA is uh, like that barrier or threshold that people need to meet. Uh, in that case, uh, suppose a student is there who has, you know, secured a decent to average CGPA, not the, not the best, not say uh, high nines or something like that. Uh, how hard is it for them to get internships and placements in companies of such grandeur like Microsoft? So at least from uh, this is completely based on my experience in our batch for the Microsoft internship, the cutoff was seven. So I don't think an ex like great CGPA is even required. Uh, the cu a cutoff for the for, uh, online exam was seven. And after which I think there were around 60 people that were selected for the inter interview process. So as I said, uh, this is different based on different uh, different companies that come forward. I heard Amazon had a very high cutoff. And similarly, so I think a recommended standard is try to at least keep it above nine or in the high eights. Above nine is like that sweet spot because companies like to filter with the nine plus. So uh, right. having it above nine is beneficial. But it's if even if you're in the eights, it's still you still have as good of a chance in getting to good companies like Microsoft, IBM, and all which come. Um, right. So with regards to that, uh, you know, when, whenever you focus only on your CGPA, we see a lot of, you know, gradation happening and, you know, a lot of, uh, problems happening with regards to projects and things like that. Is there anything which you would want to talk to your, you know, the first timers or the freshers of the college who can build upon something to make their CGPA up? So, uh, personally for me, I, so I think a lot of the CGPA race comes with FFCS which is that what kind of a teacher that you get, what kind of a class do you get? So it is a little bit of an RNG, but for me personally, I used to take whichever class was available, even if it was a difficult teacher, because I know the average is always going to be down and then just try to right. perform above average. And that's, that's mostly it. At, like even like you'll be surprised by how like such a little thing is something that's even more important because I can talk about times in my French class where people who were uh, where, like in assignments where everyone was getting full marks, people just forgot to submit assignments. So like small things like that, the, you need to be more vigilant about your academics, but, but also let, just strive to work better than the rest. Absolutely. Um, another very important point that is most universities today host a lot of hackathons or similar kind of events, you know, which uh, target those technical areas that one develops through their engineering. Uh, how hard is it for them to, you know, like uh, get internships or placements? Like in, in any case, are, are really the hackathons do matter when it comes to placements? Uh, like your performance in hackathons also matter. Okay, so here's the thing. Here's the extremely like the one thing that everyone needs to realize is that often when you're in that interview one on one, the interviewer just looks at your CV. He sees the certificate. He doesn't even see who the cer cer uh, certificate or publication is or whatever achievements that you've listed there is presented by if it's by Harvard or is it by some like third party. He doesn't use that certification to judge you to think that you're great. He just uses that certification as a base of what question I'm going to ask you and your response to that question, the ability to be able to portray your insight and the ex amount of knowledge you have on that particular topic that you've listed in the CV is something that's important. So as I said, being goal oriented, even in hackathons doesn't matter. Even if you've attended like 50 hackathons and you list all of them on your CV, he's not going to look at uh, the CV and going to be like, Oh, this is a very diligent person and stuff and all. He's going to ask you questions based on this and the, how you're able to answer his questions, uh, his or her questions is something that's very important. Right. Uh, with that, we'll come to the concluding question that we have for you. Uh, so this is a more of a situation kind of question and we place this question here to give a little more clarity on how placements work in VIT and you know, like how students can go about it. So if you were to choose uh, between a very well renowned company who will offer you a subpar salary and uh, a not so well known company who would offer you a higher package, which one would you select and why? I think it's extremely subjective, the, uh, this question, but at the same time, I can tell you what are the things that you need to consider. Firstly, you need to consider the role that you're getting. So while I was giving my uh, Microsoft uh, interview, I simultaneously also had an interview with Akamai. 
and i i i was supposed to like i had to do, do an either or choice between the final round of akamai or the final round of microsoft because both of them are happening to develop but the akamai role was a testing role whereas this was a development role so which is why i went towards that because that is something that's my forte so the first thing that you need to look forward to is the role and whether that's something that interests you whether even if it's for 2 years you'll be able to live in that role or like get some assets to yourself or some growth to yourself through that role i think the second thing is as i think everyone would agree a great bigger corporation ensures a greater amount of quality to the network that you get uh during your job so uh, for example in microsoft i although i'm working at uh, although uh, you or even any big corporation uh, although you're working at that big corporation for a sub par salary the thing is ctc is kind of a scam that's something that like everyone can go into there are a lot of things that come into the ctc so your enhanced salary is something that you're never going to get to know until you actually get to know so what you also get access to are things like what i like to call soft benefits things that don't necessarily show up in your ctc but it are very beneficial like uh, for example uh, being a part of microsoft i get access to almost every learning resource that microsoft has which is linkedin learning or riley plural site you also get access to like work from home accessories so my entire home setup to work a second monitor keyboard and all is provided by microsoft you also get access to a vast network of people which means like just if i have a project idea which i want to work on i can put a mail send a mail out to a mailing list and get responses get collaborations immediately with people all over the world through a network that microsoft has already established so the way that you look at it is not that how much money i can make but how i can harness certain frameworks that have already been put in uh, that already exist within these corporations so being big or small doesn't matter you could be a small corporation something like ola which is like not the biggest but if ola has a great framework and works closely with institutions that you are interested in then that's something that could uh, that could be beneficial as well perfect perfect thank you so much pratyush it was absolutely amazing talking to you uh, no that problem. a lot of things that we take back from this interview and i'm sure a lot of our viewers will be benefited uh, because of this thank you so much patyush thank you so much it was actually my pleasure it was very fun being here